Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to 2024. And welcome to the first episode of this new year, episode 372. And what we're talking about today is going to be associated with a handful of posts over the next two months. So January and February, posts and episodes, I should say, that will help support and nourish your ability to attain the intentions, hopes, and dreams you likely set as you stepped into this new year. We kicked this series off, this informal series, I like to say, because each of these posts individually and each of these episodes individually are offering tools and inspiration for you to live your simply luxurious life and find that true contentment and cultivate it so that you're savoring your everydays. They can work on their own, but when you put them together, they really will continue to strengthen your energy, simplify your life, so you gain clarity and then ultimately the the success you are seeking. So on Monday, the first new post of the year kicked this series off, sharing 20 ways to live simply and fully, how to make space for your New Year's intentions to materialize. And as I shared in that post, Today's episode is sharing simple rituals to enhance the everyday. And not only will I share a handful or more than a handful of rituals that you can then take and make your own, I'm also going to talk about what makes a ritual one that you want to welcome into your life that will enhance your everyday. So we're going to break that down today. All right, before I get to today's topic, this week's petit plaisir is one for gardeners and also non-gardeners. It is something that I came across and have deeply savored. It is a theoretical or philosophical book, and it's simple to read and quite inspiring for a daily meditations book. I look forward to sharing with you what that is at the end of our conversation. But first, let's talk about simple rituals to enhance the everyday. As 2024 began waking up to its first day on the calendar, so this past Monday, a most treasured ritual ensued for me along with Norman and Nell. Something I have been doing for as long as I can remember once I began living on my own with pups as my companions has been to go for a good stretch of the legs and greet not only the new day, but the new year. And with each person we pass, the annual exchange of Happy New Year instead of the regular good morning is shared. And I always love that one particular day of the year when we do this, because there's a, there seems to be a deeper smile, a, 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 a more celebratory connection. These are always usually strangers. Sometimes people I've recognized from walking in, in the places that I walk. But if I'm, if I'm not in my home, oh my gosh, it started to snow just as I started to record this. We haven't had snow in three weeks. This is lovely. But what I love about that exchange is there's an acknowledgement of the day that it is. There's a presence that we both are sharing in that moment. And it's it's so simple, but you see each other, you celebrate, 
and you're enjoying what you're doing. So that is part of the ritual, the walking in the morning and then the exchanging. This exchanging of goodwill with passersby and their dogs, if they if they have a pup in their household, seeing the new year on the very first day that it's born. And it is morning when we're taking this walk and a holiday morning at that. So often there is a magical hush and tranquil calm found wherever we may wander, as fewer, if any, cars are about. And many people rang the new year in the second it arrived on, on midnight, while others like myself were sound asleep, tucking in a couple hours before eagerly anticipating the first outdoor excursion of the new year. This or these are my rituals that I savor so much, and they only come around once a year. But what a way to set off the new year well, at least for my taste. And that's the thing we'll talk about today is we really want to tailor this to each of our predilections, our, our guiding signposts, so to speak, of what we value. And so as many of you know, if you've been a listener for a long time, we explore the topic of rituals quite frequently here on the show and on the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life. And I've included a link to all of them on the show notes if you want to check them out. And initially, it may seem redundant to do so again in today's episode. But as I have experienced in my own life, my appreciation for the benefits and happiness deepens, and therefore I understand even more fully the power of carefully choosing rituals to tailor to the lifestyle we love living. It is in this tailoring that our daily lives and future outcomes that we hope will materialize have the opportunity to enrich our experience and bear the fruit we have envisioned. As the saying goes, When we know better what will nourish us well, we then can do better. And such is the case with carefully chosen and savored rituals. So first, let's take a look at the five characteristics of rituals before we take a look at examples of said rituals that you may want to adapt or add to suit your everyday life. Now, the first one is they must be porous by design. And what I mean by that is it is, first of all, one of the most important aspects of rituals to understand that there is a need for them to be porous. And what I mean by porous is that we create and engage in rituals that breathe life into our days. We must not mistake in porous for pliant, meaning flexible, as we don't necessarily want our rituals to be flexible, as it is the structure itself of that ritual that creates the ability for us to breathe freely. And so if, for example, this is a very simple one, but if, for example, we enjoy a particular variety of tea to begin the day. And so if we were being pliant, we would be flexible and we would say, oh, any kind of tea, it's just tea, I just need tea. But if you're like me and it is tea that you want, but you need and want a certain type of tea, that is what's going to set my day off well, then if, for example, I'm given a very sweet, fruity tea, no, that will not make me start the day well. And I know this is a very simple thing, but that's just a powerful part of rituals that we're going to talk about today. They need not be extravagant. In fact, they shouldn't be. Part of the reason, for example, the tea ritual is so important is often I'm enjoying a tea that has sentimental value. And so so not only am I enjoying the tea that I have chosen, but I'm also holding a particular memory that deepens this ritual even further that is held special for me. And then when you're relaxed because you're enjoying what you're sipping on and you have a good euphoric moment, small or large, whatever it is, you have a peace of mind about you, you are fully present and thus you are relaxed. And your mind, when it is relaxed, is held open and can entertain the first ideas of the day that dance about creating in front of you to see if you are interested in exploring them further. Now, again, a very simple example, but the reason we want them to be porous is so that ideas can flow. You can be fully present. It's not to, it's not to be so flexible that you're not enjoying what you're doing because it is part of enjoying what you're doing that enables you to relax and lets your mind be held open so that you can engage fully with the moment you find yourself. So that's the first characteristic of the rituals we're talking about today. They must be porous. Number two, they must be simple in structure, as I alluded to just a second ago. 
in order to enhance our everydays, we need to make sure our ritual is simple in structure. Now, in other words, our chosen rituals, if they become so complex, even excessively expensive or time monsters and to suck up all the time to create them, they can prohibit opportunities from being witnessed because we are so consumed with creating and making the ritual possible that everyday life is not lived, let alone enjoyed. So ironically, to use the word ritual, and this is a this is important to point out as well, this term ritual itself, it may not actually be the best semantic choice, as those who have studied rituals over time and history define characteristics of rituals as quite rigid and very rule governed by a particular institution where they are where they are practiced or within that by the people that are part of that institution. And the reason they want it to be so rigid is to ensure adherence for the sake of the preservation of that institution. But in the case of rituals as they pertain to living simply luxuriously, you and you alone or me in in the case of the tea are the governing body, right? We're not making these rituals for other people. This is solely for us. So therefore you can tweak, you can change and refrain from or eliminate rituals as you find them to best suit living a life that brings you true contentment. And in fact, you must. So in a way, it is the right word, right? So we're talking about preservation. We want to preserve this life we love. We want to preserve a life that is high in quality, that is rich in meaning, and that can be deeply savored every single day. And this will ebb and flow based on how we grow and what we learn about the world and ourselves. And so in a way, yeah, it is exactly the right word. But if you're looking at it in more logical um, uh, terminologies, we don't want to become rigid because if we become rigid, then we don't allow ourselves to apply what we learn as we are traveling along this road of our life. So the rituals that we are exploring um, on this podcast in The Simply Luxurious Life are dynamic in nature and must be dynamic because we as human beings who embrace curiosity and growth are constantly learning more about ourselves and the world and then applying that knowledge. Our rituals then too must evolve with us. So whether you wish to call these chosen activities you regularly engage in each day at a certain time of day or week or month or season or year, whether you call them rituals or would prefer a different term altogether, perhaps routine or les habitudes to welcome a bit of French language into your everyday, I would like to share with you some today that will enhance your everyday ensuring you are preserving and even creating more energy that you can continue to make the progress you desire toward the outcomes you wish to materialize as we explored in Monday's post earlier this week, how to live simply and fully. All right, so that's the second characteristic of rituals that will enhance your everyday. The third is to make sure you're choosing rituals that reduce or eliminate distraction. One of the fundamental purposes of a ritual when it comes to living simply luxuriously is to free your mind. The habituation of the ritual, first being something you enjoy so that you will begin to relax, but also enabling you to not think about what you are doing, thus it being something you do all the time at a certain time of day or certain time of the week, month, season, or year, is trusting that it is a beneficial practice to partake in so that you're free in your mind to be open in whatever way you need it to be so. So for example, and this is, this is going to seem like an obvious one, but let me just walk you through it. I thought it fit this perfectly. I have been waking up to classical music for the past six years now. It is my music of choice in my house, and I share a classical composition in every monthly Thought to Ponder with uh, top-tier members, as well as include more than, I think, 70 selections in my latest book, The The Road to Le Papillon. And over the past year, um, I have attempted to play my music in my bedroom on a Bluetooth-enabled radio so that I could make sure I don't have my phone or my iPad or tablet in my room. I haven't had my tech in my bedroom for a handful of years now, and I love that. Um, but I, the only way to listen to the music that I enjoy is on their apps, and so therefore I need some kind of tech in my bedroom. 
So anyway, I got a Bluetooth radio. And for the longest time over this past year, the connection would keep cutting out between the radio and my device, which I would keep in my kitchen. And so then I would have to get up, <laughs> go to the kitchen, restart the app. Finally, and I really, really want to just paint a picture in, in your mind, my palm slapping my forehead. Duh, Shannon. Why isn't it working? Well, I realized I needed to move the radio to be in better proximity to the phone. In other words, no walls in between so that the connection can be strong. You should actually, depending on the device, every device is different, have just about three meters away from your device if you want it to work. Sometimes they can stretch longer depending on Anyway, long story short, I finally moved so moved the radio so that it was in alignment with the phone, even though the phone was not in the bedroom and there were no walls in between. And the connection has been solved. <laughs> I no longer have to get up at random different times, whether in the morning or evening, because I also go to sleep to classical music. Um, and uh, the reason I share this example is that because, yes, the ritual of having classical music was a, 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 a nourishing one, but what wasn't nourishing and what was causing these minute little moments of stress was the distraction, getting up, turning it back on, getting up, turning it back on. And so you don't want the rituals to distract from why you have included them in the first place. So either get rid of them or do what I did and try to tweak it so that you can continue to enjoy it without the distraction. Now, this may seem so very, very obvious to you tech techies out there. Well, duh, Shannon, um, Bluetooth is only capable <laughs> in certain situations. But, you know, you just go about your life and you just assume because it does work sometimes that there's something there's something else wrong. It can't be that simple to solve. It was that simple to solve. And likely the ones that you love to include in your life, there's some small tweak that you can make to get rid of the distraction that makes them a little frustrating at times. Because the goal with a ritual, the benefits are to help us relax and to bring enjoyment without annoyance so that you can have an open mind. So that's the third characteristic of bringing these rituals into our lives. Number four, ensure that the rituals are nourishing both in the short and long term. Now, it's one thing to have a routine that works and is easy to, for you to follow and you don't have to think about it. It relaxes you, you enjoy it, it's something you look forward to. That's short term. It's another when that routine is grounded in the knowledge that it, what you're doing is nourishing, whether literally due to the food you eat regularly or drink, the, what you drink um, or select to drink, or mentally, cognitively, because it strengthens your self-esteem, well-being, and or deepens your desired skill set. So in other words, do these rituals that you have chosen, do they both nourish you in the short term and the long term. And once you answer this question objectively, either keep or adjust what you do so you can emphatically say yes and keep on savoring what you have thoughtfully welcomed into your daily life. This will not only bring you peace of mind, but it will deepen the habituation so that you become even more and more and more open-minded as far as you're free of for thought to and be entertained whatever it is you're you know you're trying to you know come up with creatively or solve or whatever it is and you also know that what you're doing that you're not thinking about is benefiting you now and in the future so that's number four number five the last characteristic for rituals that enhance your every days do you look forward to partaking in the ritual Sometimes we begin by choosing a ritual because we know it's good for us, but we don't necessarily entirely enjoy it. So what is the trick then to ensure we stick to these rituals that we know in the long term they are going to be beneficial, but right now it's really hard to get them to, to stick. To, I mean, they take a lot of mental energy and effort to get going. So this is my simple trick that I've used, and I'll share with an ex you an example of how I've done this in my life. But you want to pair... This new ritual that you know is nourishing long term and will be short term eventually once it becomes habituated, pair it with something you already enjoy right now that is still nourishing or at least benign. And so therefore, you're more likely to do it. So for example, when I be began meditating each morning, this was over six or seven years ago, 
It was not a difficult ritual to do, but it was new. It was different. It was something I didn't fully understand, but I did know that it was nourishing and would be beneficial long-term and eventually in the short term as well. And so consciously, I chose to view this as an opportunity to sit quietly with my dogs without distraction. The pairing of the ritual that I knew was a worthwhile one to welcome into my life, which was meditating, with something I dearly loved already and savored, has now created a ritual that is meditation that I dearly love all on its own. And yes, my dogs still join me. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're off playing and doing what they do. But often they're so accustomed to this too that they'll come and sit with me. The key is awareness and being honest with ourselves. Providing enticement need not be seen as cheating because it isn't. It is motivation to care for ourselves well. It's almost like training wheels, but the training wheels are there so that you can grow and you're adding something to your life that down the road, long term, is going to bring you immense benefits. And in the short term, once it fin- once you finally get the, you know, you get the feel of it, you get your balance with it, you're like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it you will start seeing little benefits on the way. And and sometimes you won't need, for example, the dogs are, you know, at the groomers, so you're by yourself and you're like, oh, I'm still going to do this. This is what I enjoy doing. It becomes easier. It becomes easier. All right. So those are the five characteristics of the rituals that you're going to start bringing in consciously and practicing regularly in your life, which will ultimately simplify your daily and life around whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, seasonal, yearly, which then frees up your mind, reduces your stress, enhances your energy so that you can start to do these new things that you want to bring into your life and ultimately step forward toward the goals, outcomes, hopes and dreams you have to live the life that you know aligns with your true self. All right. Before I get to the many examples, I want to introduce you to a quick sponsor. I'll be back in about a minute. On my desk, in my office, is One Skin's Essential Moisturizer. And I'm regularly applying it to my hands throughout the day. Not only does it feel good, but it also enhances the quality of my skin. In this very dry climate we have here in Bend, we all know that the New Year's is synonymous with big health resolutions. But do you know what I'm keeping as is in 2024? My skin's biological age. Biological age, you say? What does that even mean? It's basically how old your skin acts and looks, which can be different from your actual age. So you see, One Skin's products are powered by a scientifically proven peptide called OS1 that targets lines and wrinkles right where they start, your cells. This isn't just another skincare routine. It's a real science breakthrough. And in fact, OS1 is the first of its kind to actually turn back the clock instead of just masking the signs of aging. With their full line of face, eye, body, sun, and travel-sized products, One Skin doesn't only promise healthier skin, they prove it. And I'm all in. For a limited time, the listeners of The Simple Sophisticate will receive an exclusive 15% off One Skin products using the promo code SIMPLE when you check out at oneskin.co. So start 2024 off right and give your skin the scientifically proven love it deserves with One Skin. As I mentioned, I'm in my 40s and my hands are out in the sunshine during the warmer months of the year. And I am starting to see that they definitely are not the young things that they used to be. But at the same time, if I'm consciously applying products that work beyond just moisturizing, but also anti-aging benefits, then I'm welcoming them into my routine. And that is what I'm doing with One Skin. By having it readily available on my desk, I can easily and regularly apply it. And I've started to notice a difference, which is why I'm so excited that One Skin is a sponsor of the Simple Sophisticate podcast. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. 
Get started today with 15% off using promo code SIMPLE at oneskin.co. That's O-N-E-S-K-I-N dot C-O. That's 15% off oneskin.co with promo code SIMPLE. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the Simple Sophisticate and tell them we sent you New Year, Healthier Skin. That's One Skin. Welcome back. All right, now to the examples of rituals that contain each of the five characteristics we just spoke about that will enhance your everyday life. First one, set the stage for a good day to begin. Now, I began this ritual that I'm going to share with you this last year when I realized how wonderful it felt to step into the kitchen in the morning and really the whole house out of, after I get out of bed, step, in, step into the living areas. And have everything ready to go. And all I had to do was turn on the stovetop to boil the water for tea. Now, after many years of burning the candle at both ends while teaching and blogging, there were many mornings during the school week when I would have been too tired to entirely clean up the kitchen after dinner. So I would leave it until the morning. I mean, I just did not have the energy. And I know many of you out there can relate to this. However, when I woke up, there was nothing I wanted less to do then tidy up before I could then enjoy my breakfast. But I always did it. Um, I always did tidy up the kitchen first before cooking myself breakfast. Um, but I also had a little bit more energy in the morning than I would have had the evening before. I love my breakfast ritual. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I wanted to make sure I did enjoy it. And so that's why I would clean the kitchen up. And because I knew how powerful my breakfast ritual was, I would expend the energy to clean that kitchen up before I started, even though it should have probably been cleaned up the night before. And I say should, and I shouldn't say that. You know, we do the best we can and we nourish ourselves the best we can. And I knew I needed to get to bed when, I've had, when I had those days where I was so tired. And I, I honored that. And I think that's important to do that. And there will always be days like that. And do not beat yourself up about it. Now, all of this, no doubt, seems obvious to beginning the day well. But sometimes the evening before will find us super exhausted. However, to set the stage for a day that we can give all of our energy to, to the new activities rather than catching up from the day before, when we do this, we are often running far better and our mind is less burdened by unnecessary tasks. If you live with others, this could indeed be a shared task. And as Nell has tried to help me uh, by licking the dishes in the dishwasher, these will all be my task. But again, this is also why I've created systems of simplicity in my own life to make them enjoyable and easy to remember to do prior to going to bed. Now, exactly what am I doing? Now, everyone's is going to be a little different. So I'm just sharing an example here. But beyond just tidying the kitchen up, so putting all the dishes in the dishwasher, starting the dishwasher, um, putting uh, away anything that's just loose on the counter that shouldn't be where it, where it is um, openly, um, I tidy up the living room, uh, plump up the sofa pillows, you know, fold the blankets up, um, put the teacup that I was, you know, enjoying my, my herbal tea that evening into the dishwasher. I start by putting water in the tea kettle that's already sitting on the stove. So all I have to do when I wake up in the morning is just turn it on. I don't have to go put water in it, maybe spill some on, maybe cause I'm half asleep. I, I, it's the simplest little detail, but it actually makes a big difference for me. As well as I will set out the dishes and silverware for my breakfast. Now my breakfast is a meal that I have not changed in over 15 years because it is something I both enjoy and that is nourishing. And I, I list, uh, I link to that so you can find out what that is in the show notes. And uh, the finishing detail that signals to my mind that the day will begin well tomorrow is to put my go-to teacup and saucer next to the stovetop, ready to be filled with um, hot water and a spritz of fresh lemon juice uh, because that is the first drink I have in the morning when I when I go to meditate. Whatever rituals you enjoy in the morning to begin your day, why not have them set up for you to step right into so that no forethought is needed and you can have this feeling that not only will bring you a smile when you step out of your bedroom, but set a very nice tone that will influence the rest of your day in a wonderful way. So whatever your morning ritual is that nourishes you, why not set it up the night before? 
Now, I'm not someone who who lays out my clothes. I've never been someone who does that. I tried that once. It just doesn't work for me. It's not something that actually is nourishing. I like to feel my clothes out every morning. I'm like, okay, what do I feel like? What am I doing? Because that will change in a moment's notice. So I do not do that. But I know a lot of people do that. And that is a nourishing ritual. So that might be something that works for you. So that's just another example. The second example is very simple and might seem like a bit of a luxury, but in fact is a necessity. Welcome at least one living plant or fresh flower bouquet into your sanctuary at all times. In the 2006 study at Harvard conducted by Nancy Etkoff, they found that the conscious inclusion of beauty, so you're doing this intentionally, it's not by chance, you're consciously including beauty in your daily life, it improves your mood and your compassion towards others. So this is yet another energy booster and a simple way at a small expense to our budget to enhance our everydays for a myriad of positive outcomes in our daily lives. And this doesn't have to be a big grand bouquet. If you have just one beautiful flower, a wonderful sunflower, a gorgeous uh, hydrangea, a single hydrangea mop head, <laughs> put it in a bud vase. And if you're someone who enjoys indoor plants, this is an added benefit that you probably already knew about if you're, if you're someone who is a gardener that has indoor plants, but it really does enhance the quality of your everyday. And it's beauty. It's the beauty factor here. And now I also think this applies, not think, I know this applies to how we decorate our interior. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second, but beautiful artwork, vases, fabrics, pillows, um, things that aren't clutter. And everyone has a different level of, you know, uh, what their line is for clutter, but beauty is powerful. And this is something we're going to talk about in future episodes and, and uh, blog posts. But when we cultivate a home with intention to include beauty and the one, the fact of having a fresh flower, a bouquet where it changes each week, it deepens our appreciation because it's, it's different. And so we see it. And so we're more present and we, you know, say, oh, wow, look at that. You know, and we know it's evanescent. So it's going to change. So give this to yourself. It's not a luxury. It is a necessity. It will provide beauty and thus relaxation and calm that will de-stress you and open your mind to be more energized. The next example of a ritual to bring into your life is to design afternoon rituals to look forward to as dividers to the day. Now, rituals help enhance the quality of our lives by demarcating our days when we forget to do so ourselves or need support in establishing healthy boundaries. Whether with taking a break from work, reminding ourselves to eat well without rushing, taking time to be socially engaged for no other reason than because we enjoy the people we get to connect with, or caring for our health and mind well, the afternoon rituals are essential to enhancing the quality of our lives. In 2020, I wrote a list of 18 afternoon ritual ideas, and each of them are ones that I enjoy or have enjoyed in my own life. And I've linked that in the show notes so you can check that out. So similar to piggybacking two things together when one is more difficult to habitualize, as we talked about earlier, but we know it's worthwhile to do, when we adhere to savoring afternoon rituals, it reminds us that a life with boundaries that we have chosen, that we have designed, reflects a life lived well, and it respects the person who is living it, which is us, even if that means saying no or pausing until tomorrow or not answering emails until tomorrow, whatever it might be, something that needs to be done and it will be, but with our inclusion of the afternoon ritual, we will ensure we bring our best and most nourished selves back to the work table. So that's another idea for rituals that will enhance your everyday. Next, Create evening rituals to ensure a good night of sleep. Now, way back in episode 305, I shared 36 bedtime daily rituals to ensure a restful slumber. And the primary reason to invest in exploring what these rituals will do for you is to gain the powerful benefits of a good night's sleep. 
Sleep, as we know, affects our entire way of life and being. And when we wake up after having enjoyed the amount of sleep our mind and body needs without interruption and having been able to sleep deeply without interruption, the benefits are experienced in nearly, if not all, aspects of the day we step into. Our perspective, our energy levels, how we engage with others, our health, our skin, the list goes on and on. So as I mentioned, check out episode 305, either listen to it or check out the show notes to see how you can design, just as you are going to design your morning ritual, design your evening ritual that leads you to bed that will ensure you have a a restful night's sleep. Next, choose rituals you only partake in during the weekend, but you do so every weekend. Now, these rituals are special. To the outside world, they may appear unnecessary and maybe a bit luxurious, but they are rituals that keep you on track during the week and motivate you to stick to what you need to do, even if sometimes you don't want to, especially if your energy is lower than you would like due to circumstances beyond your control. Now, this may come in the form of permitting yourself to enjoy a croissant or croissant every Sunday morning, which is something that I do with my breakfast. Um, And many, many listeners and readers know I've been doing this for years because I talk about it so often. Um, In the most recent season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen, I shared in detail how to make these very simple but beautifully delicious French croissants and pain au chocolat. And I've linked that episode so you can see it. Or it might be something such as going on a walk on a very special trail or at a very special place that you only go on the weekends because whether maybe it's a longer walk or maybe it's farther from your home, so it takes longer to go to and you can't do that during the day or the work day. Um, Or it might be that you spend all afternoon or all day on Saturday in the garden after a work week that only allowed you moments to poke or potter about in your garden. And that's For me, when gardening season is upon us and I can be outside, Saturdays are my gardening days. Sometimes Sundays too, but oh, Saturdays, I don't step into the office. I turn off the tech or at least don't check it. And I let myself just be immersed in my garden. And that really is something that motivates me. One of the many things um, throughout the week so that I can feel good about the week that was having done what I needed to do and wanted to do, but then put it to bed and focus on the one time of the week I get to garden. Or you might go to a local bookstore and do this every single week. Maybe you don't purchase a book every time, but you have different books that you want to pick up or you discover new books that you'll eventually pick up. Or maybe you should be picking up a book every week because that is your treat. That is your luxury. That is a ritual that enhances your life because you're reading something, learning something, but also thoroughly enjoying it in the moment. When we have this ritual every week, we create anticipation, we heighten motivation, but also deepen the savoring that takes place when the weekend finally does arrive and we can now enjoy what we, what we have been looking forward to all week. So not only are we creating daily rituals, we're also creating weekend rituals. All right, I have two more for you. The next one is to turn regular shopping for groceries into rituals. Now, as someone who loves to cook, loves food, loves to learn more about how to make certain dishes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The rituals I have created around food shopping are welcomed and savored. And this was not something that I begrudgingly did. However, I acknowledge that may not be the case for everyone for a variety of reasons. And so I did write a post back in 2019 titled 10 Ways to Enjoy Grocery Shopping. You can click and read that on the show notes. So once you read through that, if you're not on board with creating rituals around grocery shopping, read that post. Maybe you got one, maybe you'll have one foot on, (laughs) on this, uh, on this boat of trying to enjoy these rituals. Um, here are some ideas for how to bring pleasure when it comes into this, this task we have to do shop for food, um, that ultimately when we do it right, when we, you know, make delicious meals, but also nourishing meals, The moment is enhanced, but so too is the future moment, our health, our ability to be energized, to do what we love to do. All right. So however often you would like to or can shop for groceries for your regular meals, choose a time of day when you are not rushed, when you can dress well, and let your mind and eyes explore all the while keeping your created shopping list 
at the forefront of your mind to guide your shopping and your purchases so that you can stay within your budget. Now, prior to heading to your trusted grocers, because I actually go to three or four different people or, or shops, sometimes just two, sometimes all four. It depends on what I need, right? So I have my list of the shops and what they have, and I have my, my order of which shops I go to to, to, to reduce the, the driving. But, but prior to actually going, carve out 30 minutes or an hour each week or prior to each trip where you sit down with cookbooks and recipes to decide what your meals will be. I truly enjoy doing this. Um, I will go to my kitchen uh, library and I will pull off a couple or three cookbooks that I want to either try recipes from or return to recipes that I love. And then I just let my eyes delight in the eye candy as I skim through the pages. Now, often this is in the afternoon. So if it's during the work week, when, I, when my ritual is to go to the, to the stores, my work day is done. And then I sit down with my cup of tea. Summertime, I'm sitting out on my garden porch and I'm soaking in the sun um, and just no rush, just cruising, making a list. And sometimes this is the day before I go shopping. So sometimes it's on a Sunday. Anyway, um, I have a cup of tea usually or a chilled glass of water with cucumbers that are plopped in. And I just let myself unwind and I discover delicious meals to come in the week that will be. On top of that, when our farmer's markets open up, and I, many, I know many of you have farmer's markets that are open year round, um, ours open up in May and they run through October. The weekly visit for us, um, they welcome dogs. And so Nell and Norman get to go with me and we really do make this a special ritual to savor. Um, I don't buy a ton of food there because uh, I do have a budget, but I do enjoy going saying hello to my the vendors that I shop from um, and picking up as much fresh produce uh, um, as I can. And anyway, so I will carve out a couple of hours. I will dress well. I will grab my favorite sun hat and I will my, and my market tote of choice and I will head out. And sometimes I follow this market trip with a lunch at a local restaurant that's right there by the market. And I will dine al fresco or on the terrace. And so it becomes a, a full circle kind of ritual um, that is nourishing uh, because it's giving me food that will satiate but also be delicious and healthy. And it's something that I deeply enjoy the moment that, you know, connects me with my community. And it's wonderful just to be outside. So whatever your rit rituals are around grocery shopping, when, when we shift our mindset about them from half twos to get twos, we can make them quite special. And we get to do them quite often, right? So we need to always be making food and, and cooking and eating. So we get to do this quite regularly. So of course there will be times, and there are times still in my life, when we might be quite rushed because things happen beyond our control and life happens. But it's also, I find, in those moments that are rushed and harried that make me appreciate those moments that I'm not rushed, that I get to savor it the way I've designed it or, or want it to be more relaxing and, and um, slow paced. And, uh, and I realize, oh yeah, this is really enjoyable. Um, so that they're not all, all going to be that way, but more often than not, they can be with intention. All right. Last but not least, the ritual that I want us to conclude with something I, I, I talked a little bit about on Monday's blog post, um, financial rituals. So after I read Kate Northrup's book, Money, A Love Story, it was a book that inspired episode 354 um, last year, How to Find Your Financial Freedom. In fact, it was the most popular and most downloaded episode of 2023. Um, after reading that book, she suggests um, the ritual of financial Fridays. And so my Fridays in the office have become my financial Fridays. And I tend to no other task except those dealing with money. So budgeting, purchasing, paying bills, taxes, etc. And part of what makes this a ritual, so things something that I enjoy, but also enhances the quality of my life, I genuinely look forward to it. And it is not done only occasionally when I have to, when it's there's a headache to deal with, or I look at it as, oh, my money's going out the door to pay these bills. I don't look at it that way. I think I look at it as, okay, guess what? I have money to pay these bills. I am organized. I can pay this. And I'm going to be more organized because I'm doing this every single Friday. Um, and this also is done only on Fridays, which means that 
I'm only dealing with money, which I don't enjoy dealing with money. I'm not someone, if I wanted to be an accountant, I would have been an accountant. You know what I mean? So it's, I'm, I'm someone who likes to create. That's why I do what I do. That's why I love having the opportunity to blog and write and share this podcast and the cooking show. I says, well, that's what I love to do. I love to create and connect with you, the listeners and the readers of the Simply Luxurious Life and the Simple Sophisticate. And that's what I get to do the other days of the week. And I'm not letting money come into those days. So it really sets up a separation that brings a lot of peace of mind. As well, by dedicating Fridays, so each Friday to Financial Fridays, it can be quite fun and celebratory because you're doing it literally every single Friday. And you can begin to see the business and your personal finances flourish due to decisions you made and your personal financial strength grow because you're adhering to the rules and small steps that are leading to the outcomes you seek. So in other words, you are, by doing this every week, making it a weekly ritual, you are engaged in preventative practices, enhancing practices, rather than reactionary or emergency or unwanted situations that, are be- that had been put off. So by solely dedicating that task to Fridays, I do nothing else on Fridays. I don't get distracted by having tended to another project and letting it run long. And so my financial focus has been delayed. I give all my attention to financial um, projects or decisions. And when it's done, my Friday work is done and the work week is done. So a twofer. So whether you choose Friday or another day or attend to it a little bit each day, but at a designated time, the same time, so making it a ritual, whatever works for you to make it a ritual you look forward to and find value that adds to the quality of your overall life, that is the ritual that is best for you. Initially, it may not seem that this would be a fun ritual to create, um, but I have a feeling when you start taking back the control that at this moment may feel out of your control, you will see your stress decrease and your confidence and peace increase. And those in and of themselves are motivators to continue to welcome such a ritual into your life. All right. So those were a handful of rituals to consider welcoming into your life daily, weekly, so on and so forth, that will not only enhance your everyday life, but simplify it so that then you can have less stress, and more energy to give to what you want to give it to and ultimately create the life you love living. When we design our lives to include rituals that consciously were chosen to cultivate the life we desire and the person we are capable of becoming, gradually, yet eventually, we become and begin to live in such a way we had once dreamed about. Rituals put our feet on the road that will lead where we wish to arrive. And along the way, these chosen rituals make the journey all the more wonderful to enjoy and deeply savor our every days. For further in-depth exploration and explanation of the benefits of daily rituals, I encourage you to read a post that I wrote a handful of years ago titled 34 Inspiring Daily Rituals to Enhance Your Creativity. And it shares gems from people who are doing what they love to do, living the lives of their dreams, and the daily and regular rituals they partook in or partake in. Some have passed on, some have not, and you'll recognize many of the names um, that just offer gems of wisdom for you to consider as you design and implement rituals for your own life. And I've linked to that post. Actually, it was an episode, episode 255 on the show notes. And you can find the show notes at the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 372. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. So the first Petit Plaisir of 2024 may initially appear to be just for gardeners, but I will make a fair case that this is for everyone. Maybe you're someone out there who says, yeah, gardening sounds like a great idea, but it's not for me. Or I would like to, but I don't think it's worth it. Or I can't do it. That's why I want you to pick up this book. And if you're already a gardener, this is a book you will love. All right. It's a very short book. It only has, it's not a small, it's not a large book. It only has 140 pages. It came out this past summer in July. 
and it's titled Why We Garden, The Art, Science, Philosophy, and Joy of Gardening by Claire Massette. Now, Claire Massette works for the National Trust in in England, and she was formerly the gardens editor of the English Garden Magazine, and she has written uh, freelance for publications such as BBC Homes and Antiques, Gardens Illustrated, Country Life, and so on and so forth. She is an avid gardener, but she by no means, and she professes this throughout the book, is someone who you know, has perfected gardening. She has simply found the joy of why we garden. And this book will give you no tips on specific gardening approaches. You will not learn this plant is best for that season, this so on and so forth. No, 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 no. This is a philosophical book and it's organized by concepts such as work, with regards to, yeah, this does take work, but that's part of the joy of it. And she'll explain why. She talks about the gift of beauty that garden brings us. And we're not talking about perfection in the garden, but why we're drawn to gardening. She talks about how it provides therapy, how it's a place to to connect with our spirituality, our spiritual side, about growth, personal growth, how we learn about how to be a better human being, and how a garden can be a sanctuary. Um, there's so many others. Uh, the, I love the concepts that she talks about. And I've read, a, I read a chapter a night, or that's how, what I read, a chapter a night. And she'll bring in various other gardeners from past and present um, and what they have shared about what they've learned and gained from being gardeners. And she also references quite a few gardening books from past and present that are worth checking out. But just to give some passages here. So um, she talks in the chapter titled Growth, your gardening journey will be your own, but I'm willing to bet it's a rich and transformative one. And what she's getting out there has nothing necessarily to do specifically with gardening, but what we learn about patience, humility, diligence, and how we, as we begin to create a haven for ourselves, we start to find gladness and appreciation for the little things, something we talk about here all the time. In fact, that's why we have the petit plaisir, how it deepens our appreciation of the everyday, of the simple beauties that we find. And then she goes on to talk about, and the chapter that she opens with is one of my favorite chapters where she talks about beauty. She mentions our natural desire to create beauty is nowhere better served than in a garden. And this is despite gardening's many challenges. It is the most difficult art to get right. To be successful, you need to create a complete experience, one that you can look at like a painting, but also walk around. A garden is a space you inhabit. And the, and the unique and paradoxical part about a garden is that it's forever changing. It's not like a painting where you finish it and it's forever the same. No, 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 no. This painting is going to change maybe in a week's time, maybe in a month's time, but it will definitely change in a year's time um, as it goes through the cycle of the seasons. But it's, it's a lovely book just to enjoy reading, um, especially during the winter if you're a gardener as we wait for the spring to arrive. And um, But if you're not a gardener and are thinking about it, she gives a lot of ideas um, generally about how we can garden in small spaces, or even if we don't even have a plot of land, how we can bring beauty and the gifts of gardening to, to our lives and our homes, on balconies, on terraces, on windowsills, front stoops, things like that. So a, a lovely book just to savor with a hot cuppa and um, remind ourselves why gardening speaks to us, why it resonates with us so much maybe more than we ever imagined it could before we started to garden. So the book is titled Why We Garden, The Art, Science, Philosophy, and Joy of Gardening by Claire Massette, and I highly recommend it. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything. That is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, on the gardening note, if you do love to garden every month, and this is something I started last year on in January, every month there is a dedicated detailed post for gardeners. Um, and it usually appears about the middle of the month on a Monday. It always comes on a Monday. And it shares with you the tasks in the garden for that particular month, as well as contemplations that I'm having in my own garden. So you get to have a photo tours of my garden every month at Le Papillon. 
And then I also, very similarly to a this and that post, include all sorts of books, tools, findings that I've discovered and recommend and want to share with fellow gardeners. Um, for example, this summer I was trying to figure out how to uh, fix um, the rose slugs from staying off my roses. And I shared what I discovered worked um, and we'll be applying as we move on. But it, it's, it's a, it really is a detailed this and that for gardeners every single month. And it's only available to top tier members. So it's another benefit of being a top tier member. And during the, the blooming or flourishing months, so say beginning in April, running through September, I share video tours of my garden. So um, definitely something to consider or ponder if you are a gardener and or are trying to learn how to garden. I'm learning with you, but I also have learned quite a bit so far, and I am so excited to learn so much more. <laughs> In fact, this past December, um, as during the week between the years, was the time that I did a lot of plant ordering and organization and, and planning. It was a lot of fun. And I'm going to do more of that in January. So anyway, um, you can learn more about becoming a top tier member at the blog, the simply luxurious life.com slash member. And speaking of becoming a member, whether you want to become a basic or a top tier member, the basic prices are going up tomorrow, the 4th of January. So if you want to read more than two free posts every month, be sure to snatch up this really, really cheap price for basic basic membership, $2.50 a month if you buy the yearly membership for $30 or $3 a month if you just want to pay for the monthly. And that is available until tomorrow on the 4th. And then after the 4th, it will go up to $4.50 a month or $45 a year. But either way, I am so glad you tune into this podcast, which will always be free. Thank you for, for listening to the ads. That's what enables this show to be free. And I'm so grateful you tuned in today as we kick off this new year. You can find the show notes at the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 373. And I will be back on Wednesday, the 17th with a brand new episode. Until then, bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British Weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour.